One that looks like that. I'll call it the perfect solar storm. This is Corey Powell here. Experts warn that a massive solar storm is set to erupt right here, and the devastation could total as much as $2 trillion. Corey Powell, editor at large, Discover Magazine. Hello, my friend. Hello. Um, let's get the first image up, if we could, the one that shows planet Earth relative to the surface of the sun. Because planet Earth is way down here in the bottom left hand corner, right. and the sun is massive. How do we know? Here is right here, right? Right. Earth that, the scale. Right. There's, that little there's thing. That Earth. So, how, how, how come folks like you are so worried about solar flares in 2013? Well, so we know from watching the sun for hundreds of years, the sun goes through an 11 year cycle, being relatively quiet, very active, and violent. Uh, 2013 is the peak of that 11 year cycle. So we know, like, almost like clockwork, every 11 years you go through a bad period, and each 11 years, as we have more technology, we have more satellites, we can depend more on our electrical infrastructure, we're more vulnerable. If we get hit with a solar flare, what does that do to us? What, what does it do to our technology? What does it do to our civilization? Right, so what you're looking at here, uh, the, the sun, th this, is, this is million degree plasma coming out of the sun. Million. Uh, million degree. Uh, coming out at 300 to 500 miles per second. Um, it travels through space, it hits the Earth, and actually the biggest thing that it does is, it, this is all, it's, a, it's all magnetized. The Earth is kind of a magnet. It wiggles everything, and that makes electrical currents that go crazy everywhere. So it can lead to blackouts, it can overload your satellites, it can fry radio transmissions and GPS transmissions. That's happened so that, on a small that's scale before. Talk about the trillion dollars in damage. 1859, apparently Earth was hit by a doozy. But that was long before we had the technology that we do today. Exactly. So, I, Is that even a possibility if you go back 150 years ago and think that we could be hit again like that with no warning? We actually, we actually know that that happens. You can go back and look through, uh, actually, you look through glaciers, and glaciers record different times in the past when, when these things happened. Actually, the, the evidence of it gets buried in the ice. So we know this happens every 300, 500 years. So the last one was 150 years ago. It could happen 100 years from now. It could also happen tomorrow. Mm. And the one, you know, th th these flares, believe it or not, that one's actually not so bad. That, that's, 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 one, an okay one. That's, that's an okay one. That's, that's one that actually didn't cause a whole lot of trouble. The one that happened in 1859 was maybe like 100 times that. So this is the flare that comes off the sun right here and it bursts toward. Right. So th this past thing Mercury. here, right, this is, you know, this is 30 times the size of the Earth. This is a small one. The one from 1859. This is, th think about, you know, there was very little technology back then. It was so intense that telegraphs around the world were sparking and setting off fires. Really? Now imagine you do that with your GPS satellites and your cell phones and, and all the things that we have today. You could have a global blackout. So we got that to look forward to. Does this keep you up at night, yes or no? You know what, it, you know, th no. This, this, kind, this, kind of, this, no. this kind of flare doesn't, you know what, it keeps me up at night? What gets me up at night is that, is that I know that sometime in the next, in my lifetime, and probably within, you know, maybe within the next 10 or 20 years, there is going to be a countrywide blackout. And I don't, you know, we're going to survive it, but th imagine hospitals blacked out, transportation shut down, all your computers, all your smartphones shut down. So yeah, that actually, that, that does really worry me. Be a lead story. Thank you, Corey. Martha. Now from time to time, the sun is shaken by violent eruptions. Hot jets of plasma shoot from the surface as the sun's intense inner motion disturbs its magnetic field lines. Waves are sent through the atmosphere hundreds of thousands of kilometers high and at temperatures rising to 100 million degrees. These eruptions are accompanied by the emission of powerful electromagnetic rays, X-rays, radio waves and gamma rays, as well as charged particles. Visible from Earth, they trigger geomagnetic storms which can affect the Earth's magnetic field. The most obvious magnetic storm display, known as the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, can be seen in the polar region. The interaction of charged particles within the upper atmosphere causes a sort of multicolored light show in the sky. The more powerful the storm, the more visible the lights become away from the polar region, sometimes disrupting daily life. The phenomenon can interfere with telecommunications and electricity supply. In 1965, a solar storm plunged 30 million homes in North America into darkness. Each solar cycle appears to last an average 11 years, culminating in serious magnetic storms. The current cycle is due to reach a climax in 2013. Scientists are already warning of potential disruption to terrestrial communication systems.